I recently got a comment on this channel from Snarling Maiden that says, I don't understand why my marketing doesn't work. I'm not sure what to do about it. If you don't know, how do you know? Well, there is no way for me to help that person without saying specifically what they're doing. And that's when I replied. And to that, they said, I guess my marketing failed because I don't know how to market. And this is not a new comment in any way. I've been getting a lot of people talking about the fact that they don't know how to market. And the fact is, I can't really help everyone to find the exact marketing strategy because I don't know what you guys are selling. And it's so different from person to person. Also, maybe something that works for me with marketing is not going to work for you because I like to use videos and you don't. There are so many different aspects of marketing that no one can actually cover in answering a comment to you guys. Now, the reason why I'm singling out one person is not because they did anything wrong or I'm shaming anyone for not knowing how to market. I'm singling out this person in this comment to say thank you because you are the inspiration for this video in which I'll teach you guys how to learn marketing, if that makes sense. And when I say how to learn marketing, I don't mean this is how to do Pinterest marketing, do that. This is how to do TikTok marketing, do that. No, I mean how to look at the topic of marketing and narrow down what you should be doing and how to study that better for your niche. I will be talking about how to start to learn marketing, which can be also useful for people who already started marketing, but they feel like they're doing something wrong. And my top 10 reasons why your marketing failed, as well as things that kind of kill your marketing from the start. And with that very long intro, I really hope that you have a notebook or a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil to write things down because one, maybe I'll say something that will like click in your head and you're going to be like, yeah, I think I should write that down. I, I need to remember that. And two, because that's pretty much my biggest marketing advice, right from the bat, write everything down. And with that said, let's just get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mel and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And this is a crash course on how to teach yourself marketing. And this applies to people who already started marketing or people who are brand new to this, as well as people who are doing print on demand, selling printables on KDP on Amazon, selling your books or notebooks, as well as people who are trying to do affiliate marketing and even people who have like normal shops that, you know, they knit something and then they sell it on Etsy because this video is about how to market pretty much anything and it's not how to market anything it's how to teach yourself to market your own business and to become the best marketer for your business and I hope that you guys will enjoy it as I mentioned I'll be taking you through the process of how to learn how to market from the beginning pretty much my beginning of how I learned how to market and basically how I learned everything that I know to do online till this day, plus 10 reasons why your past marketing might have failed or your current marketing is failing and things that kill your marketing. Um, let's just get started. I wrote a few uh, bullet points for this. Uh, I usually don't use the computer for that, but I don't know, I kind of got inspired and I couldn't find my notebook drifting off. So grab a notebook or a piece of paper, grab a pen and a pencil, and let's start with the first Thing. we need to talk about marketing and that is it doesn't matter what you sell you need to market it and it doesn't even matter where you sell it and I feel like this is such a huge topic with people who don't understand why their Etsy store is not working or why they don't sell on Redbubble or on Zazzle and the fact is these are not magic platforms even if you do all your SEO correct let's say someone searches for something and you're selling it and your SEO is spot on guess what about 200 or 500 or 2,000 people are selling it as well. And Etsy and Zazzle and Redbubble and whatever, they only have several spots for the first page that the user is going to see. They can't literally show people all 2,000 search results. And even if they could, people won't look at them. You need to bring in your own marketing to your own platform if you actually want to maximize your profits from that platform. And I'm saying maximize. I'm not saying generate because a lot of people can say, yeah, but I'm making sales on Redbubble and I'm not marketing it. But what if you were marketing? Couldn't you have made more sales? Have you thought about that? We also have people who are not on any platform who desperately need marketing. But let's say you are on a platform that has traffic. Let me share a little secret with you guys and the viewers of this channel, I think, would know this by now. When you bring in traffic to a platform and make a sale, that platform thinks, hmm, this is a good product. 
I'm going to start showing it more and more and not for not the products that I marketed myself on Zazzle or on TeePublic or on Society6 are the products who are selling the most, not to mention my RIP Redbubble store that went nuts because I was marketing my own items and these items became trending inside the platform. Marketing is a must. So how can you teach yourself marketing? Well, this is pretty much the part where you're gonna wanna grab your pen or pencil and write a list down. And I want you to write everything that I'm saying right now on that list. Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook groups, Facebook ads, blogging. By the way, if you wanna market using your own blog, one, we'll have a tutorial on that soon. I'm sorry, I'm still working on it. And two, you're gonna have to market that blog on social media as well. Continuing on with our list, TikTok, YouTube, and you can add other social media platforms that you know of. You can also add platforms like Medium, where people can post their own articles, as well as email marketing, whether it's with MailChimp or MailJet, or with a service like Substack that lets you basically create this hybrid blog email marketing service, as well as Reddit, providing freebies as a tool for marketing, working with influencers, and even becoming an influencer yourself. Okay, we have our list written down. What now? What you need to do now is search for content on YouTube about how to use these marketing platforms to market your business. For example, print on demand, Redbubble on Pinterest, or how to promote my home decor items with influencer marketing, or how to do email marketing to sell printables. You're gonna wanna search and watch these videos. Now, when you're watching these videos, you're gonna have to do two things. The first being to expand your mind. And this is something that, I've encountered here in this channel constantly. I've had someone ask me how they can do Pinterest marketing for TeePublic, and I recommended the Pinterest marketing tutorial for Redbubble. To that they replied, yeah, but that's for Redbubble, not for TeePublic. Really? When you're creating a Pinterest pin to promote a t-shirt, do you think that the source of the t-shirt really matters to the pin design or to understanding the logic of how Pinterest works? I also have another example from not a marketing video, but I made a video about how to sell printables using Payhip. And in that video, I was showing how to sell coloring page printables on Payhip. And I literally got people DMing me saying, can you make a video on how to sell printable greeting cards on Payhip or printable wall art on Payhip? And I'm like, it's the exact same thing. I wasn't showing how to make a coloring page. I was showing how to take a coloring page, PDF or JPEG, create the mock-up photo, put it on Payhip and explain the system of how Payhip works. This can apply to anything. And I feel like so many people are just so focused on finding that specific tutorial. Even people who wanted to promote their Society6 stores, and I referenced them to a video I did about Zazzle marketing. They're like, yeah, but that's Society6. So what? Zazzle is a print-on-demand platform, no printables, thank you Zazzle, and Society6 is a print-on-demand platform. So why shouldn't you learn from something that is a little bit different? Obviously, if someone is going to tell you how to do video marketing to products they made handmade while telling you that the process is filming yourself making the product, that might not be as relevant to, I don't know, if you're just selling notebooks. But try to learn from things that are not just directly the platform you're using, but more directly the product you're trying to sell and the platform you're trying to sell it on. The second thing you need to do in this step of learning from YouTube is to write things down in a notebook. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Watch a video and treat it as if it was a class. Go to school by yourself. The concept of having a notebook is going to help you in so many ways. Number one, it's going to Put it into your brain. This is a class. I'm learning now. You're in a learning mode. You're investing time with your own marketing education, which is amazing. The second thing is we have so many studies that prove that when we write things down, we remember them better. And third, you're going to need to write this information down in order to proceed further on. Now, once you have everything written down and you watch several videos about different topics when it comes to marketing, the next step is not going to be to do marketing in all of them. You'll be doing it incorrectly and you'll burn yourself out. The next step will be to make a list of what is required from you to actually do this marketing effort. For example, if I want to work with a blogger or a YouTuber or an Instagram or TikToker, 
that is in a certain niche that I'm designing for. What I will need is to create a list of all these influencers. I will need to send them my products. I will need to see maybe they actually want money to promote my products and not just my products. These are things that I'm going to have to write down. Let's say you want to do Instagram. Instagram is really big on reels. So write down, I'm going to have to have video formats of my product or of my service or of my blog post, whether it's to create slides on Canva with text on them and photos or use mock-up videos like, for example, from Placeit or literally taking videos of your products yourself and uploading them onto Instagram. I'm not saying do that. I'm saying write that down. Let's say you want to open your own website. This is also a matter of cost. You're going to have to write down how much money is that going to cost you and what skills you're going to have to have in order to achieve that. Basically making a list of what is required from you to actually start marketing on these platforms in a correct way. Now that you're looking at this list, maybe there will be things that you want to educate yourself more on, like how to build a website or a little bit more graphic design, or maybe you're going to have to invest money in certain platforms like Placeit or Kittle or Canva or, you know, buying your own hosting and domain service, which by the way, we have a discount on this channel for people who want to buy from Hostinger. We have a 10% discount for domain and hosting purchases. The link is down below. And a tutorial about blogging for print on demand and for pretty much anything will follow up hopefully still in March. I'm back in Bansko, I'm back in the zone and I'm drifting off again. And what I want you to do once you have this list written down of what is required from you is to try to find one or two marketing platforms. Start with one or two. A little side note on that, if you did purchase your own domain and you have the name of your business, yeah, start with one or two platforms is the best advice. But maybe try to open a page on Facebook, open an Instagram account, a TikTok account, and a Pinterest account with the name of your business just to make sure that you have that option later on. Once you have your selected one or two platforms, you're going to be doing two things. The first is going into the platforms and actually trying them out. Try to sort of do this research of what your competitors or people who sell similar things are doing on social media. Try and see which one of these efforts is getting more likes or more engagement and which one of them just looks boring. Also investigate the actual platform in terms of how to do things. I mean, I literally had people asking me how to upload an Instagram reel. Yeah, because you open Instagram and you just didn't click on the plus button because you thought it would explode. Well, just try to click on buttons and see what something does. You're going to have to know the ins and outs of these platforms if you want to market using them. The second thing you're going to do is to continue on learning. And now you're focusing your learning on these platforms, which means that if in the previous part you watched a video about how to market print on demand using Instagram and you thought this was a good idea, now you're going to want to watch 10 videos about Instagram if Instagram was your chosen platform. Watch more videos, educate yourself, and of course, get started. Don't forget to try to find the time to actually do marketing in a consistent way. And this is a mistake I've seen people do so much. Yeah, I started Pinterest. I spent two days uploading pins and then a month later, nothing happened. Well, did you continue uploading stuff? You don't actually have to spend all your day on a platform just to market yourself. Sometimes you can narrow down your marketing efforts to 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, maybe half hour every few days or twice a week for 40 minutes can really fill out your marketing efforts, especially when you can schedule on some platforms for the content to appear. I feel like the last thing about learning how to market is to actually give yourself a shot. And that means to actually try and see if this works for you in a long term. Because again, if you're going to do Pinterest for two weeks and then you're going to do Instagram for a month and then you're going to do Facebook marketing for three weeks, you're never going to know if any of those work because you keep abandoning them. So really try to focus in and give yourself time. And there was a video that I did on this channel when I was in Greece, I think it was almost a month ago, when we started our challenge for 150 days, 20 minutes a day. In that case, with my challenge, I chose to design something 20 minutes a day, but you can definitely take this challenge and follow it through and start it for yourself for marketing, just to make sure you don't abandon something because things take time. And it's not just time for the algorithm of some kind of social media platform or Google SEO to realize what you're doing on that platform or for people to discover you. 
but it's also time for you to get good because the more you upload Instagram reels, the more you're going to be good at using Instagram and creating reels. And the same goes to Pinterest pins and blog posts and anything you set your mind to do to market your business. Now, along this process, if this is something that isn't working for you, if it takes you five days to create an Instagram reel and it's draining you and you're upset and you're depressed, don't do that. Switch to another marketing effort. And while I want you to give a shot to everything and try everything, maybe blogging isn't for you. Maybe being on TikTok isn't for you. So if these things aren't working on a personal deep level, not on the level of this is not making me sales after a week, but in a personal level, then you move on to the next method and research and start all over again. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Moving on to 10 reasons why your marketing failed. <laughs> I like that part. Or why your marketing will fail. Because we can learn a lot of things from mistakes more than we learn from success stories. And before we get to that, I would like to kindly ask you that if you like this video or found this content useful, hit the like button down below because every time you do that, YouTube thinks, hey, this is a cool video. I'm going to show it to more people. You know, it is an algorithm after all. Next up, 10 reasons why your marketing failed. Reason number one, you didn't give it much time to succeed. And I think we've talked about it in the past few minutes, but yeah, you need to give things time to actually start working. It's not going to be like that. And that's a tip, not just for marketing, but for any, any online business. I have a rule whenever I start anything in the line of passive income, like blogging, affiliate marketing, even this channel, I tell myself, this is not going to make me money for a year. I'm going to work on it. And I'm going to work on it hard. And it's not going to make me money for a year. And then usually I'm surprised for the better. But my approach is that this is not going to make me money for a year. Am I still going to do it? Because if the reason why you need to make money now on print on demand or on printables or on affiliate marketing is because you need money now, because you need to pay rent in 20 days, then don't start print demand. Go get a job. I'm not even joking. This is such a harmful thing and it's a discussion for a different video. But yeah, this is not going to be something that's instantly going to make you money. The second reason why marketing failed is because a lot of people measure success wrong. You have no idea how many people chase the wrong numbers when it comes to marketing and not just even marketing, even on separate platforms. And I've been getting this question for such a long time. I'm starting to see being favorited on Redbubble. From which amount of favorites am I going to start seeing sales? What does those two things even have in common? What are you talking about? Seriously, if someone wanted to buy your product, they would have purchased your product and put them into cart. They wouldn't have favorited it. You can have a million favorites and not a single sale. And I had more sales than favorites. I had more sales and followers as well. Stop measuring numbers wrong. And the best example I can give you for that is back in 2016, I was working with this woman who had a marketing agency. So she was getting all the clients and I was only talking to her. So that was nice. And I was doing Facebook graphics for her and basically for her client that had a clothing brand. And her client invited both of us for an emergency marketing meeting. I think she was going to fire us because she was getting less likes on Facebook. And that was a huge thing to her. Like she was like, I'm paying you money. I think she like she was like, I need to get my money refunded because I'm getting less likes than what I used to get. And I'm like, you're getting more sales. You're getting more sales. The reason why people comment and like less is because they don't spend time on the platform. They just go and buy. What is your point of marketing to get likes or to get sales? And it's why it drives me nuts. And the blog I used to have for the women team.com, the one that got messed up with a GoDaddy hack, my Pinterest account, the main one for that, had 200 followers which is nothing, but it also had 800,000 monthly views, which is what I want to see more than followers. I want to see clicks. I want to see people buy. I don't want to just see likes on Instagram because you can make the most beautiful post on Instagram and get 50 likes. And if that makes you happy, even if you sold nothing, then you're measuring marketing success wrong. Three, you are not doing marketing right in that platform. I've had so many people who tell me that Instagram failed for them and they were showing me their Instagram profile. And I'm like, you don't have any reels. 
oh yeah, I'm just posting posts. Okay, but Instagram likes video form content. This platform literally likes you to upload videos and more videos. They're competing against TikTok and against YouTube shorts, which is why they want you to make more and more videos. So if you're just making posts, Instagram's not going to promote you. It's not what they want to see. And it's the same with Pinterest. And I can't believe I have to say it again and again and again. I've had people look at my Pinterest tutorials going like, you're just wasting your time creating pins. You can just pin directly from Redbubble, directly from Zazzle, directly from Society6. Guess what? These pins that are being pinned directly from these platforms are one by one ratio boring mockups. However, Pinterest likes pins that are 1000 by 1500 pixels. So you're literally not following the rules of a platform. Every platform has rules of what it wants to see and what it doesn't. The same way that a Facebook group has rules. Because if you're going to go to a group of Etsy sellers, and there are multiple groups of Etsy sellers on Facebook, so many. If you're going to go to one of these groups and just post every single day, shop for my store, shop for my store, you're probably going to get kicked out of the group. However, if you're going to use the group as it was intended, when people ask, hey, I'm looking for a gift for my mom, she likes cooking, and you have an apron that is for a mom, you can comment back. And that's the correct way to use that platform. You really have to educate yourself in the correct way to use a platform, because if you won't, your marketing will fail. Reason number four, you're not focused on an audience. And this is a debate that goes on and on and on and, and frequently comes up in this channel when people send me a shop and go like, can you give me marketing advice? And I go into the shop and they have a mishmash of photography, funny, sarcastic designs for people with ADHD, people who live in New York. They have things about liking pizza, kawaii style clip art with watercolor paintings. And I'm like, who is your audience? Let me try to reverse the situation for you, for you to understand. Let's say you're scrolling on Instagram and you really like dogs and you specifically like chihuahuas. And then you see this really, really, really cute post about a chihuahua doing something funny. It's a reel. And you decide to follow that person on Instagram. And then the next day, you see another Chihuahua video. That's kind of cool. You like Chihuahuas. But the next day, they post a t-shirt for men who have beards. And the day after that, they post a shower curtain in pink for kids' bathrooms. And the next day, they post another thing that you don't care about. Eventually, you'll stop following that profile. And a lot of people these days don't do that. They don't unfollow. They just go to the profile and see if all the content is interesting to them before they follow. It's important to be consistent with your marketing. And for that, you're going to have to know who your audience is and what they're interested in. Maybe make an avatar. Like, for example, the person who's going to want to shop for my Zazzle store is a woman from the age 30 to 35. She has some money to spend on a journal. She would really like a journal with her name on it. It will be more important for her to have like a certain color palette. She'll also be interested in journaling prompts. Try to figure out who the person that you're marketing is, whether it's someone who's like yourself, whether it's a family member and in this case, I hear a lot of people that they don't know what to do because, you know, your Redbubble store can contain so many different types of items as well as Society6 or Zazzle or Public. And in that case, you can choose to promote a certain product, for example, cool t-shirts as your niche. This will apply to audience who likes to wear cool t-shirts. But without focusing on an audience and just marketing the stuff that you randomly designed, you're not going to get anywhere with marketing. Fifth reason why your marketing will fail is that you're not actually targeting the right audience. And I have a really good example for that. There are so many viewers of this channel who sell patterns or digital paper packs, and they ask me about marketing. And whenever I go into their Instagram, I always see a bunch of patterns and the tags, floral patterns, scrapbooking. And I'm like, are you trying to target people who want to do scrapbooking? No, I want to target people who do print on demand. Okay, so why don't you tag print on demand? Hashtag print on demand. Why don't you show how this pattern is going to look on different products? You're targeting the wrong audience literally in your tags. And this also happens the other way around because I see people who promote their t-shirts 
with hashtag print on demand. Do you really think that someone who's interested in Chihuahua dogs and would potentially buy your funny Chihuahua t-shirt is going to go to Instagram and search hashtag print on demand? I mean, come on. I also see this in groups, by the way. And this one drove me nuts in one of the biggest YouTubers groups where people would just go in, uh, high quality t-shirts on Redbubble, buy my stuff. And I'm like, we're all Redbubble sellers here, man. <laughs> You're targeting the wrong Facebook group, seriously. Number six, why your marketing can fail is that you don't know your audience. You don't know your audience. And this will also lean into a comment that I got from one of the viewers. They were talking about the fact that they really want to make skateboards on Zazzle, design the skateboard board, and they really want to market it with a blog, but they wouldn't know what to write because they're not a skater. So what can they do? Well, the answer is two different options. One, Find someone who knows a lot about skateboarding and have them write to you. They would also have to be a content writer and an SEO specialist, but fine. Or two, don't sell skateboards. You don't have to sell skateboards. I mean, if you made 50 skateboards and they're sitting in your house and you have to sell them, then yeah, find someone to do that. But if you haven't started anything yet, you just think that skateboards are a cool idea, but you have no marketing strategy, guess what? There are 1,500 other products on Zazzle that you can sell. Don't try to just sell something because it's cool if you have no idea how to market it. Like, maybe that will cure half of your shiny new thing syndrome by saying this. If you do not know how to market to a specific audience, if you don't know the audience, don't design a product for them. I've seen so many people who try to do coding t-shirts. And you know the funny part? A lot of them contain coding mistakes because they're not coders. So they just heard that it's a cool trend or someone will search for that keyword. But guess what? If a coder is going to go onto TeePublic or Redbubble and try to find a funny coding t-shirt and they're going to see your design and it contains a mistake, they're not going to buy it. One last example on knowing your audience is one of the bloggers that I met, I think it was 2013 back in Israel. She was affiliate marketing AliExpress and she was a plus size, lush, sexy woman and she simply purchased things from AliExpress for plus size women and wrote blog posts about them or wrote information about them in certain groups on Facebook for plus size clothing or for shopping online. The thing is, because she was a plus size girl, she knew what to say. She knew how to show the product. She knew how to talk about the product. She knew those insecurities that other women might have about being plus size to even say something like, this is a good dress for women who have more stomach fat because it has like a slimming effect or it focuses on your bosom or it focuses on showing your ankles. She knew how to talk to plus size women because she is a plus size woman. And it's much easier to market when you know your target audience. So who are you? Are you your target audience or maybe a family member is a target audience? Really try to market by knowing your niche and make designs on a niche you don't really know anything about. Maybe consider a different niche, a different product and do something you actually have something to say about. Reason why your marketing failed, number seven, your marketing is boring. Yes, we know. You have only one mock-up on Redbubble for this t-shirt. Yeah, we get it. But if you're going to keep putting that mock-up again and again and again, it's boring. If you're going to create the same Instagram reel with just a different t-shirt, it's boring. Try and do something interesting. And you know how you get to do something interesting? From the previous thing, by knowing your audience. Eight, your platform is not good. And that's a bit of a controversial thing because I can tell you, for example, that, you know, my marketing isn't working because Redbubble sucks. No, that's probably not it. Because when I'm saying your platform isn't good, it could also refer to, let's say, one of the reasons I stopped uploading to Find Out America. One of the reasons I stopped uploading from a medical condition and then I kind of didn't want to continue because... Ordering this to a lot of countries is really expensive. Let's say you do your print-on-demand marketing for your print-on-demand photography wall art and you want the majority of your clients or you're targeting them to be in Israel. Well, Fine Art America shipping to Israel is very expensive. So the chances of someone from Israel actually ordering on that website would be very, very slim. It's why when I order test stuff or gifts for my friends here in Europe, I order from Printful because they have a fulfillment center in Latvia. It's also one of the reasons why 
if I want to choose something from the United States, I will go with Awkward Styles because they know how to ship things to Europe. I'm going to go with a platform that can ship to a certain place. I'm not going to market myself to a place where it will be very difficult to get the product. Also, if you're working with a bad supplier, then yeah, you're not going to have repeat customers. They're going to leave bad reviews on your social media or on your Etsy store. So you need to make sure that the platform is good and it can ship to the people who will get the product and it actually has good quality products. Now, if you don't want to test order from multiple print-on-demand companies, I have a full playlist of checking out so many different products from print-on-demand, whether it's print-on-demand wall art, whether it's print-on-demand clothing, literally the jacket I'm wearing right now, and of course, all these puzzles. And all these puzzles here. I need to do another puzzle video soon from multiple print on demand suppliers and platforms. And I will leave a link to the full playlist down below in the description. So that can save you a little bit of time and money when you're trying to narrow down a platform to sell on that actually has a good product. Reason number nine why your marketing failed is because <sighs> your product is not good enough or is not good at all. I have had so many people who try to consult me on marketing going like, I don't know why, why my, my marketing doesn't work. No, it's not a problem with your marketing. Your design is, doesn't look good. Your design has a grammar mistake. You're designing t-shirts where the text is like here. You design a t-shirt that has a painting on it in a weird alignment. You're designing a sticker that has some sort of a weird background behind it. And you're designing things that are just not good. So many people put a design on a notebook and stretch it all over instead of duplicating it on both sides. So many people are lazy with their design work or are simply not good designers, which could be the case. Man, we don't all have to be print-on-demand sellers. And yeah, I'm focusing a little bit about print-on-demand, but even with coloring pages, with printable coloring pages, with books, so many people, yeah, my marketing didn't work for me, you know. And I'm like, have you ever met a coloring book fanatic, a colorist? Uh, do you know anything about coloring? Because what you're making is generic or boring or even too small to color or too big to be interesting. Your product can be the problem with your marketing and you need to be able to look yourself in the eye and say, this is not good. Or take critique from people who are telling you this is not good, whether it's from people who tell you, you know, you need to change a few things to make this look a bit better or just, you know, do something else. Number 10 and last reason why your marketing failed is because you don't have any money. And this is going to be a controversial thing. And I'm not talking about money to spend on ads, not necessarily, because not having any money can affect your marketing. The fact is, while there are free tools online to use, you can't really replace a really good software for design, a really good software for mock-ups, a really good software for making videos. You can't really replace the technology you might need. I know so many people who want to do Procreate design, so they save up to buy an iPad, because what can you do? You can only use Procreate on iPad. And so many people who want to market using a blog, but they're using some kind of freebie blog somewhere that isn't really well designed because they don't have money to buy a domain and hosting. So yes, marketing might require a little bit of money from the start to invest in apps and softwares and hosting and domain, not necessarily marketing ad budget, because I don't do that. And other than that one blog, that I was bringing in traffic to the blog from Facebook as a part of the deal that I had with people who purchase advertising slots on the blog itself. I don't use Facebook marketing in terms of sponsored ads or Google ads or any kind of money spent on ads to promote my business. I'm not saying it's the best way to go. I'm not saying that everybody should only do free. There are definitely advantages to paying money on advertising. That's not what I meant. I meant you don't have any money to start and people do need money sometimes to get started, to get better tools, better apps, and even their own domain to take their business more seriously. We're almost done yet and I have another short list of things that will kill your marketing. And the first thing is, <sighs> I hate marketing or I'm bad at marketing. This is your self-talk to yourself because saying I'm bad at marketing is Dumb. I mean, can you tell me how long it's going to take for a spaceship to reach the moon? Do you know that? 
Probably not. Is that because you're a bad astronaut or because you simply didn't study this? You're not a bad marketer. You're not bad at marketing. You just haven't tried it correctly yet. You just don't have that skill yet. And if you really hate marketing that much, go do something else. Seriously, if you keep saying, I hate marketing, I hate marketing, I hate marketing, and I'm to blame with that too, you're just not going to do it. You're going to talk yourself out of actually giving it a chance and you're not going to accomplish anything. Another phrase that goes along with it is, this will never work. I literally sit down with people, make them a full Pinterest plan, and the reply is, this will never work. Okay, so don't do it. If Instagram's not going to work, don't do it. If TikTok is not going to work, don't do it. And you know what? Just don't try to make money in any way. Don't even try to apply for a job anywhere because no one's going to accept you. Why bother going to the supermarket? Because, you know, it's not going to make you happy. You're not going to find food. Nothing ever works. These are negative self-talk that will bring you down. You can say, this hasn't worked in the past. Or there is a chance that this will fail. But I'm going to give it a shot because there is also a chance that this will succeed. And even if this will fail, there is a really big chance that I will learn from it for next time. So. Take all that bad self-talk and put it away because it's really not helping your business and not helping your marketing. Another thing that will kill your marketing that you tell yourself is that you don't have any money so you can't afford it. And uh, It touches on what I said in, in, I don't know, three minutes ago when people say, like, I can't do marketing now because I don't have money for ads. Who said anything about ads on Facebook or on Google or on Amazon or on Etsy? You can try Pinterest. It's free. You can invest a little bit of money on a good software, on a good domain, on hosting plan, and then just start for free. Someone once told me that they can't build a blog because all the themes cost $69 and they don't have money for that. First of all, you can find themes for half that amount. And second of all, there are free themes. Maybe they won't look exactly like how you want your website to look, but they're a good start. So why not start with that? Someone said they can't start email marketing because it costs a lot of money. Well, there are free options for email marketing. You just haven't tried them yet. So don't tell yourself that the reason why you can't do marketing at all is because you can't afford it because that's just not true. Another thing that will kill your marketing is not uh, the negative self-talk, is the perfect self-talk. My product is perfect. My marketing is perfect. This platform is just a scam. Well, some platforms are a scam. I've had so many people who were talking about working with Motif, for example, who were reporting that nothing actually comes in the mail and they feel like, you know, they just took their money. But a platform being a scam is not because I did my marketing and I'm perfect and it's not making sales. A platform being a scam is if it tells you that it's going to deliver a certain product and it doesn't, or if it's not paying you the money it owes you without you doing anything wrong. So try to push that away. So many people fail marketing and it kills their marketing because they just can't admit that they're bad at it or that their product is not good enough. If you can't look at this product and say, it's worth the amount of money that I'm asking for it, why would anyone buy it? Look yourself in the eye and be honest with yourself. Otherwise, you're going to kill your marketing. Another thing that will kill your marketing right off the bat is not being creative because creativity has led to my biggest success stories of how I made money online. Seriously, being creative is so important. And I see it with so many people, for example, who sell on Public, but none of them bother to market the 72 hour discount that you get every time a product is being added. And I'm hearing this from people. Yeah, I uploaded 30 designs and yeah, I can post about this, but then what am I going to do for the next month? So upload one design per day and it's going to be on sale and you can post about this. So many people on so many different platforms do not utilize the fact that this platform has a sale. I mean, do you need to have someone to tell you this is how to market a sale from Redbubble on Instagram? Be creative. And creativity is not just about making a sale or doing all these things. Creativity also comes in to play when we're talking about how we talk to our audience because a successful Instagram profile or TikTok or YouTube or whatever is not just a profile that goes buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this. No, it's a profile that actually talks to the people. So yes, if you are making print on demand Chihuahua t-shirts, maybe find a funny Chihuahua video and post it. If your design is for a certain type of profession, find profession jokes on that profession and post them on Instagram or on TikTok. You could be doing so many different things. I mean, 
You could be selling notebooks by giving journaling prompts. Creativity will take you a long, long way, even when it comes to coloring pages. I talk to people like, oh yeah, I wanna market my coloring book. So they pretty much post a photo of the page, this, the same mockup of the same page. And I'm like, why don't you color it? Make a video of yourself coloring it. You know, something that people who likes coloring are gonna like. And they're like, yeah, but it's a waste of time and it's not what people are doing. Just be creative, man. If you're not gonna be creative, you're just gonna kill your marketing. There was a sentence that I remember, it was on our walls in one of the companies that I worked in. In marketing, to not be creative is to commit a professional suicide. <laughs> I just really like that sentence and it's true. So be creative, otherwise you're gonna kill your business. You're gonna make the same mock-ups, you're gonna upload them in the same way, you're never gonna do anything new, just be creative. And the last thing that's gonna kill your marketing is to not learn from your mistakes. And it happens because we're afraid to make mistakes or it happens because we think we can't make mistakes. So make mistakes, go ahead, make a lot of mistakes. As long as you learn from them, you're on the right track to you know, learn something new. You're a one man or one woman show in your online business. Learn, try, and make mistakes, and learn from them, and try again. That's how you learn marketing, and that's how you learn print on demand, and that's how you learn affiliate marketing, that's how you learn to build websites, that's how you learn to work with clients, to knit, to do pretty much anything. You learn, you try, you fail, you learn from it, you try again, you fail, until you finally succeed. I do have to say that I really enjoyed making this video. I enjoyed writing the script. Um, I feel like I enjoyed making this rather than any other marketing tutorial where I can just show you this is how to open a Pinterest account to make the Pinterest boards and pins, which I'm making a tutorial about that this month as well. But I really enjoyed this video because I feel like as a person who has been working online for the last, uh, what, eight years almost? Wow, time flies. I feel like, you know, when you're doing this thing, when you want to grow a business online, education and learning how to learn is like the best skill. And I see that as something that was the reason for my success in many things that I did online. And of course, I failed a lot, but I learned from them. And I feel like this is the most important skill for people who want to make any kind of online income side hassle their main livelihood or business, their job, and to make a full-time living from print on demand, from printables, from selling books on KDP, from having affiliate blogs, a YouTube channel, a TikTok account, or whatever. In a past video, I shared the stories of three people that I know who made print on demand their full-time business. And whether you are interested in print on demand or anything as a full-time business, these people laid out to me the process of how they did everything, what helped them with their marketing, what didn't help them with their marketing, and even some numbers on the process and how it started, how much money they made from the start, how much money they're doing now, and life changes they did along the way to fit them having an online business that they want this online business to be their full-time income. And again, even if you're not doing print on demand, I really recommend you watch that video next. But with that being said, that was it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something about how to learn anything online. And as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!